Hi, I'm Andy Powers. In this video, we're going to talk about if distance running is really truly the best thing for a pitcher to do or not. I'll see you in a second. All right, long distance running. Is it really for pitchers and does it really benefit us to do it? I can tell you as a former pitcher, I have run my share of miles and I am personally not one that ever enjoyed any of them. And I can tell you as well as a former coach uh, at the high school, college level, I've had my guys run their share of miles too. And it was just because I always thought that that's why it's just what you do as a pitcher but do you ever sit there and figure out or question yourself as to well why do we run distance well I'm gonna give you a couple of the reasons why a couple of the more common reasons why guys do it the first reason that guys run distance is because the idea is is that it helps build endurance all right it builds stamina so that you can last longer in games you can keep your legs under you so that you don't have to rely so much on your arm as you get tired as you go farther into games okay and maybe that's something that you you've heard. Another reason that we do it is because we flush lactic acid out of the system, okay? Maybe that's something that you've heard. That's the soreness that we feel the next day from throwing and that lac that's lactic acid in the system and by running a long distance we help kind of flush that out of the system so we get the soreness out. And then one of the more third, you know, third common ones, I'm probably going to upset a few of you, but another reason why we do long distance guys is because we have no idea what else to do with pitchers during practice? We don't know, so long distance becomes kind of a babysitter tool for us because we don't have a clue as to what to do. So, these are some of the ones that I've always seen, okay? And I grew up playing especially with the whole lactic acid uh, concept and that's the one that we're gonna focus on right now. All right, lactic acid. Now, is there truly lactic acid in our body after we throw? And I'm gonna tell you, no, there's no lactic acid and here's why. There's three main energy systems in our body, okay? The very first one we refer to as ATP, CP. And this system is uh, good for about the first zero to 15 seconds. This is like just anybody, I don't care what kind of shape you're in, for the, about the first 50, up to 15 seconds, any of us can go full tilt on anything we're doing before we start to gas out. It's just a highly high dose of, of uh, explosion. And that's in our ATP CP system. The second energy system that we have is I'm just gonna, it's anaerobic, aerobic for short. And this one lasts from about 15 seconds to two minutes. All right, now this is where as you're doing something in the ATP system and you go beyond 15 seconds or so, this, your body just kind of automatically transitions into another, uh, this other energy system of anaerobic aerobic. It's at this level, it's at this system where lactic acid is produced. This is the energy system that lactic acid is produced. The third energy system that we have, excuse me, we're just gonna call it oxidative phosphorylation, okay? And this is basically anything two plus minutes beyond. All right, so this is your marathon runners or anything. Anything you're doing where you're consistently doing it nonstop for beyond two minutes, you go into this, this last uh, energy system. Another way to maybe think about it is the first energy system is a stealth fighter jet fighter plane really, really fast. The second energy system is like a Corvette, and the third energy system is a diesel truck, all right? Made for the long distance times, all right? So if we understand and we know that lactic acid is created in the second energy system, we need to remember that because this game of baseball the, the average time from home to first for a base runner in the major leagues is about four seconds. So if you take that and you said, well, if he went from first to second, third, all the way to home, made, you know, all the way around, that would take us about nonstop, about 15 to 16 seconds, nonstop, right? The average pitch in a baseball game from the moment the pitcher starts to the moment that the catcher catches it, is about two seconds. It takes about two seconds to deliver a pitch, not from start to finish for a pitcher, all right? So if it takes two seconds for a pitch, four seconds to run, then the only time, the longest play any, at any given moment during a baseball game that should last would be either an extended rundown, 
or an inside the park home run. And at that time, only the base runner is the one running. There's no pitcher or position player that's running the entire time. So if we know that lactic acid is produced after 15 seconds, but we never enter into that energy system, then are we really dealing with the soreness that we're trying to flush out of our system? Okay, I would say no. And you can look at my other video about icing your arm to kind of get a little bit of explanation too as to how to deal with some of the soreness that we feel the day after. But in this video, if we understand that this game is spent in very quick bursts, long distance running really doesn't have a place for it. All right, what we would be better off doing is sprint work. And that's everything that we do at the Texas Pitching Institute. Whatever we do, whatever exercise, med balls, ropes, you know, throwing, whatever it is that we're doing, we would try to do it in somewhere between eight to 12 second bursts. Sometimes we'll go even six seconds, sometimes we'll even what we call here super beast mode, and we'll go for four second burst. But whatever it is that we're doing, we want it, when it's time to go during that time, we're gonna train 100% into that ATP system. We are gonna go as hard as we possibly can during that time frame, whether it's eight seconds, 10 or 12 seconds, whatever. And if you're at home, if you're doing sprint work for your, your running, I want you to run as hard as you can for that eight, 10 or 12 seconds, however long you determine it. As long as you don't go beyond that 15 second time. I would actually stay within the 12 second range just to be on the on the safe side caution wise. All right, but whatever it is you do, you go at 100% maximum effort during that time frame. And then when that time frame's over, you wait until you're 100% fully recovered again before you go again. All right, the average time in between pitches in Major League Baseball is about 16 seconds. So if you can start to train yourself to go as hard as you can for eight, 10, 12 seconds, and then recover and be at 100% percent again within 15 seconds or less then delivering a pitch at hundred percent effort shouldn't that be that difficult right that's the key to what we're trying to do one of the other things I want you to try to uh, figure out too. think about a sprinter and a marathon runner Think about their body types when you look at the Olympics or whatever. Is the sprinter, what does he look like physically? He's a pretty strong, muscular guy. And the marathon runners are very skinny, right? Well, which guy looks more explosive? Okay, I'm saying the sprinter. Okay, which guy looks, uh, you know, stronger? I'm saying the sprinter. Which guy has the more replicable stride length? Now, that's something guys don't think about. If you're a marathon runner, your steps are short, but when you're that sprinter, you're getting out there. So if we're training into that stride, just like we are with a pitcher, again, the sprinter. The sprinter is where we want to be. That's the body, that's the idea, that's the training style that we want to be in, okay? Now, sprinting can be hard, guys. I'm not letting players, if you're watching this, off the hook. Sprinting is hard. Go at it hard, okay? I hope that kind of gives you a little clarity and understanding about about long distance running and maybe helps challenge you a little bit in your thinking or confirms what you're already doing. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe to my page. I'd love to hear from you. Send me questions or make comments and stuff. Love hearing from you guys. And I hope this helps. I'll see you down the road.